Hello, my name is Michael West, and I'm the CEO of Ajax Therapeutics. Today, we're going to be discussing a paper we recently published in the journal Regenerative Medicine on a unified theory of aging and regeneration. In doing so, we'll be making certain forward-looking statements that have associated risks and uncertainties. And so we refer our viewers to our filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission for more detailed information about the company. So there are occasions in the history of science and technology when there's a disruptive event. So things are going along more or less as normal, and then when this barrier occurs, everything changes. We're seeing that right now in aging research. Historically, aging has been thought of as entropy. It's wear and tear. Our cars wear out, our uh, houses wear out, and everything else does, so why not humans? We now recognize in science that aging is reprogrammable. It's a genetic program. It's development. And the fact that it's reprogrammable has profound consequences for all of us and for biotechnology. And that's the theme I'm going to talk to you about today. Well, let's begin at the beginning. In the 1800s, it became recognized that we're made of cells. And there's two broad categories of cells in our body one of which ages and one of which does not necessarily age at all. Let's start with the cells that don't age. That's called the germline. That's the lineage of cells that perpetuates the species. Sperm and egg making babies that make sperm and egg that make babies and so on and so on. We're made of a lineage of cells that have been proliferating for billions of years without aging. In contrast, the cells that make up our bodies are called somatic cells. So the skin and the bone and the blood and all the nerves and the brain and so on are all somatic cell types. They, unlike the immortal germline, are programmed to age. And as a result, uh, we, as human beings, are programmed to age. The scientist that's credited for first discussing this dichotomy of two different types of cells is August Weissmann, a German scientist. And here's a quote from one of his early works in the 1800s. He says, death takes place because a worn out tissue cannot forever renew itself. And because a capacity by means of cell division in the soma, he meant, uh, the cell division in the soma is not everlasting, but finite. Well, you notice he said two different things here. One, uh, worn out tissue cannot forever renew itself or regenerate. Some animals, you know, the salamander, you cut off its leg, it just grows a new one. We cannot do that. And then secondly, he says, cell division in our body, the soma, is not everlasting but finite. Well, let's, we're going to break these apart into two separate things, but let's begin by looking just at the kind of the history of life. Some primitive animals, single-celled animals, don't age. They just replicate indefinitely. Many of them do. Uh, as we move up into these little sea anemone-like creatures called hydra, they don't age either, and they can profoundly regenerate. You, know, you cut them in half and they just grow back. The same is true with even more complex animals like flatworms, pl uh, planaria. Uh, here in, um, we can see the first explanation of why nature would institute uh, aging in more complex animals. This was the work of George Williams in 1957. He proposed the theory of antagonistic pleiotropy. I'll briefly explain what that means. What he meant was there are some genes in our, involved in our development, our temporal development over time, uh, that have one effect early in life and a far different effect on us late in life. So, for example, they may uh, as Weissman uh, had said, they may prevent the in, in indefinite replication of cells. They may impose a finite capacity of cells in the body to replicate. They may benefit us early in life, for instance, by helping prevent cancer. But late in life, our cells will run out of that capacity to replicate. And so, at late in life, it's deleterious. These two are antagonistic to one another. And the theory is called antagonistic pleiotropy which increasingly is recognized in the field of aging research as a fundamental principle of biology of aging. Well, in this paper we just published, we laid out a sort of a synthesis of not just Weissman's idea and 
George Williams' idea, but much of the biology of aging that's being discussed today into one theory we call somatic restriction theory of aging. And the idea here is that there's some cells, as we started out by saying, that can replicate without limit the germline, they can regenerate humans indefinitely. <clears throat> But then there's a progressive restriction of that immortal regenerative potential in cells in our body over time. The first step, the first loss occurring very early on is the loss of the ability of cells to replicate without limit. The loss, as we say, of cellular immortality. Is it possible to learn how all these things work? and transfer the immortality of the germline into the soma as an advanced technology to treat the problems of aging. Well, that's the theme of the paper we're discussing. So in the 1960s, Leonard Hayflick first reported that human somatic cells have this finite lifespan that uh, Vi uh, August Weissman had proposed. So on the left you see young cells taken from a young donor and then late in life those cells as they've stop dividing. We call them senescent cells, and we call this cellular aging. In the 1990s, I started a company called Geron, where we uh, developed this uh, biology and showed that these ends of the chromosomes lit up here like, sort of like headlights on the ends of the chromosomes, are called telomeres, and that they were a clocking mechanism of cell aging. So they're sort of like a burning fuse as a clock a timing mechanism or a burning candle wick. Uh, they shorten as cells divide and uh, eventually cause cell aging or cell senescence. So here you can see the actual loss of telomere length in cells cultured in the laboratory to old age and uh, of course cells that have uh, an enzyme called telomerase that makes telomere, that weaves that thread of life on the ends of the chromosomes uh, don't shorten telomeres and then with telomerase they don't age. So telomerase is an immortalizing enzyme and we showed that by putting the telomerase gene into examples of cells from the body on the top being the retinal pigment epithelial cell that when it ages causes macular degeneration and at the bottom skin fibroblasts is an example of cells that when they reach the end of their lifespan can cause uh, problems in old age and aging of skin for instance. We showed that telomerase was sufficient to not only extend the lifespan of cells but since then it's well established that telomerase can immortalize cells just stop cell aging uh, completely. So this led to this advent this idea of, of telomerase therapy. The next step uh, in development uh, is the loss of regenerative potential. This other thing that August Weissman said was really critically important in aging. And this is a big part of the paper that we, uh, that we discuss, is the molecular mechanisms that cause us to lose this regenerative potential, which is, occurs after telomerase is turned off. So here is an example of an animal that has both of these active, telomerase and regeneration. You cut it in two, these planaria, the tail will regrow a head. You can see the eyes appearing and the head forming. The head grows a new tail, and these animals uh, are immortal under the edge of the knife and can proliferate uh, indefinitely, and they don't age as a result. As we move up in the um, evolutionary ladder, up toward humans, we have replicative immortality too, and, but only in the first few weeks of our existence after the egg is fertilized. And we lose this regenerative potential, such as displayed in this uh, plat flatworm, for instance, at uh, about the embryonic fetal transition after the body is first formed. The kidneys are formed, and, you know, the, most of the organ systems in the body, like the heart, have been formed. And then we lose that, and that is called the Weissman barrier, that point in time where we've lost this capacity to, for immortal tissue regeneration. Is it possible to reverse this process as well? 
I mentioned that the introduction of telomerase was sufficient to stop cellular aging. Is it possible to reverse development back to where we can re regenerate tissues again in a human being? If we combine this with telomerase, the theory would be we would have the most potent and powerful approach to treat many of the maladies of aging that has ever been developed in the history of medicine. While we know it's possible to reverse the developmental clock of aging all the way back to the beginning of life because that's what was done in cloning or somatic cell nuclear transfer. Nuclear transfer is where you take a cell from the body and you put it into an egg cell and then the egg cell with its molecules in, in, in the egg cell reprogram the cell all the way back to the beginning of life. When Dolly was first cloned, about a year or two later, uh, the Rosalind group that cloned Dolly reported in Nature that Dolly was not an example of age reversal, that Dolly was born old. So here you can see the, uh, an example of an article written about Dolly in the early days saying she was a sheep in lamb's clothing. In other words, aging was not reset. She was born old. Uh, Dolly was uh, an N of one. Uh, she was uh, one example that was studied. Since that time, about a, year, about a year later, we published in the journal Science, when I was at ACT, that we could take uh, senescent cells from an old animal like a cow, and nuclear transfer did reset this telomere clock of cell aging. Uh, and did re reset the lifespan of cells. As you can see, this uh, second uh, lifespan curve being actually longer than the original lifespan of the cells. We'd actually made cells younger than young by nuclear transfer. All of these animals were uh, created by us through cloning from senescent cells as sort of a proof of principle uh, that uh, nuclear transfer re reverses uh, cellular aging and uh, these animals had normal lifespans uh, thereafter. In the subsequent years, it became important for us to understand the mechanisms behind reprogramming, and uh, we filed, uh, while at ACT, and this is now licensed to uh, AJAX, uh, patents related to reprogramming using molecules rather than using an egg cell and using cloning. This is called induced pluripotency. Uh, Dr. Yamanaka's patent filing shown here at the bottom uh, our patent predated his, um, is done in a slightly different way than Yamanaka. So we showed in the year 2010, while at Biotime, that, nuclear, that these, um, these technologies like nuclear transfer could reset telomere length. So we see aged cells, uh, first embryonic cells, and then uh, aged cells, and we can show that the cell uh, lifespan and telomere length could be reset back to the beginning of life and beyond by reprogramming using defined uh, molecules like transcription factors. The top here you can see some cells from myself, my own skin cells are reset back to the beginning of life. And it wasn't just telomere length and it wasn't just differentiation that was reversed by reprogramming technology like this, it appears to be aging itself. Uh, virtually all markers of aging are reversed, including the Horvath clock shown here. Uh, Steve Horvath invented a clock looking at a certain modification to the DNA called methylation. He could very accurately tell the age of cells through this assay. And here you can see the uh, mitochondrial uh, methylation, rather, uh, age of the of somatic cells, and then those reset back to the beginning of life using reprogramming technology uh, and back to where embryonic stem cells were. So now the big question is, can we reset the clock of cell aging, not all the way back to the beginning of life, if, and can we do it? in vivo, in the human body, in a patient, for instance, with heart failure. Can we induce the regeneration of their heart to repair the damages to the heart after a heart attack, for instance, or the brain after a stroke, or the part of the brain lost in Parkinson's, and you know, it's a long list of applications. And can we take cells partially, reprogram them, take them partly back to this regenerative state 
but not take them all the way back to the beginning of life. If we did, we'd be a, you know, a pile of, of egg cells, and that wouldn't be desirable. So that we call that induced tissue regeneration at age X, or ITR. In uh, the discussion of the paper, we, we described that in the process of reprogramming cells all the way back to the beginning of life, uh, we see an early drop in the loss, uh, uh, the loss of the expression of markers of a, un, of a tissue that cannot regenerate, and the emergence of patterns of gene expression consistent with regeneration long before the cells are reprogrammed all the way back to the beginning of life. Telomerase, however, turns on when cells are reprogrammed all the way back to the beginning of life. So telomerase needs to be added into the mix separately from ITR. We have a significant amount of intellectual property related to induced tissue regeneration and the technologies discussed in this paper. Molecular mechanisms of what's called partial reprogramming or ITR. Small molecule uh, strategies to induce this state in the human body. Delivery systems for you know, formulations that can actually be used to deliver this into the human. As well as various assays and diagnostics. As an example of a formulation for the delivery of these agents, like molecular agents, uh, we've uh, been working in the field of exosomes. These are, you can think of them as sort of like envelopes that carry a message. Um, many of the messages in the cells uh, are in the form of messenger RNA. And the envelope that those messages are put into for transport are called exosomes. And here's an example of a patent filing on the use of exosomes for the delivery of messages uh, that we file. So an example of the in vivo reprogramming of aging to induce tissue regeneration for these, we hope, um, significant advances in the treatment of aging. Uh, one approach is to use a host cell line we call Recite 1 to manufacture the envelopes, to package up the uh, reprogramming factors uh, that we will be using. There's an example of reprogramming factors, uh, only meant as an example, uh, that are in our patent applications. And then we separately load them with telomerase, uh, as I mentioned, we separately uh, added in. And the result are exosomes, or these messages packaged up that can be delivered in the body and uh, for in vivo applications to reverse uh, cellular aging in the human, not just in the laboratory dish. We also have small molecule approaches to do this. And one example is our formulation called ITR 1547. And here's an example of, of the use of this small molecule approach to reset um, regenerative regenerative state in uh, aged human cells. Here we see this marker we use called a uh, proprietary marker called COX7A1. You can see it increasing, which is bad, uh, as a, during the course of aging. And then you can see how it's reset all the way back to the beginning of life using reprogramming technologies that take cells all the way back to the beginning. And then when we reprogram cells using ITR 1547, how it's reset back to the regenerative state partially reprogramming the cells. Now a flip side of the coin uh, of all of this, and the reason I brought up uh, George Williams' antagonistic pleiotropy concept is that we see a wonderful new opportunity to use these discoveries in the diagnosis and potentially even treatment of cancer. Cancer cells uh, are, have a lot of different properties depending on what kind of cancer you're talking about, but a common theme uh, in the majority of cancers is they re-express this immortalizing gene telomerase and we've discovered that they also show this embryonic reversion back to the regenerative state for instance by looking at this marker COX7A1 it's often embryonic cells often embryonic progenitors have not traversed this EFT into a non-regenerative state and then you can see adult cells are expressing the gene uh, so that's true in uh, you know, bone-forming cells, that's true in 
uh, fat forming cells, that's true, and muscle forming cells. We see it a global effect that's occurring in the body where we turn off regenerative potential throughout the body and then it reemerges in many different types of cancers. So this could be a pan-cancer diagnostic and a pan-cancer therapeutic as well. So three significant areas of medicine could be impacted by ITR. Regenerative biology where someone, or even a young person, could be afflicted with a you know, total body burn and uh, the induction of scarless wound repair would be a major advance. Age-related degenerative diseases, of course, and then even cancer. So three major areas of medicine make this area particularly important, we think, for us as a biotech company and for medicine in general. So in summary, our paper covers a lot of ground. Um, the first major theme is that aging is reprogrammable. Um, we have at AJAX certain intellectual property related to uh, the reversal of this blockage and re uh, regeneration we call induced tissue regeneration. Uh, this IP goes back some of the more significant patents to 2013 and up to the present day. Uh, we believe that the leaders in this field are going to uh, be able to enjoy um, leading in a tr transformational advance in, in medicine in general, uh, aging in particular. And um, recognizing the importance of this new field and our potential to lead in it, uh, we formed a new subsidiary we call Reverse uh, Bioengineering and we hope to be telling you more in the future about that company and our progress in, in developing these technologies. Thank you very much.